How's it going everybody? Welcome back to my C++ programming walkthrough. Um, today we're going to be looking at structs within an array. Um, last video we did an array within a struct, which we do have again. Um, but however, we are going to have an array of structs, so an array of this student type. Um, so each member within the array will have all these members and a test, test score array um, to store five student test scores. Um, it's a lot easier than declaring five separate double variables and you know test score one, test score two, all that. So you can look at our functions here. Um, pretty basic functions. We have an input function which is going to um, input data into the student, um, a print, and an initialize. Um, here we are Remember, arrays are passed by reference only, so this array is going to be of student type. Okay, uh, if you're with me so far, um, again, just look at our, our main program. Our first declaration declares an array of three components. We call it enrolled of the student type. Okay, um, so let's look at our functions real quick. We're to initialize everything. We're passing that array. Um, our formal parameter is named s, um, so we can basically initialize all the components in the array, which is three components. So this for loop will iterate three times. Um, so the first component, which is going to be zero, indicated by i, first name is going to be null, and last name will be null. id will be zero. Also within that for loop, we need to initialize each test score. So um, J will be indicating the array position within the struct, and S will be indicating, or I, sorry, from the main for loop, will be indicating the enrolled array of students. Okay, so this will initialize each test score to zero. Um, our input function basically kind of does the same thing. We have an outer for loop. Um, it's going to iterate three times for the three elements. Um, again, you could probably use a global variable for this to make it work with um, arrays of any size, but just for demonstration, you know, I wanted to keep it small because um, I'm going to call this input function and we're going to be in entering a lot of data. Similarly, you could also input it from an input file, but Again, we're going to prompt the user to enter the first and last name. Store that in first and last name. So again, whatever position we're at in the array, array zero, student, component zero is first name and last name, then the student ID with the same thing. Notice our member access operator, by the way, um, after the array. And then again, um, we're going to input the test scores, so output enter score, and going to gather the test score, store that in array index for the students, and then test score array within the struct. <clears throat> and then print will basically do the same thing, um, just output all the data that we input, output the test scores, um, we put the, um, the output test score in a for loop here, and the GPA is going to be initialized, since we're assigning stuff in this print function it's not constant but we're going to calculate the GPA in the print function so that's add, adding up all the test scores and dividing it by 5 and then we'll output that so if you want to look at our main program now um, again here's our main declaration the data type our student array we called that enrolled we're going to hard code in the first few elements here so enrolled at position zero dot first name is Jack. The last name will be White. Enrolled at position zero dot ID will be whatever the ID is, and then we're going to hard code in the test scores here. Then we're going to print that. Now notice when we call the print function here, um, it's only going to print. It's going to print three sets of data because that's how it's set up. Um, again, taking a look at that, you know it's going to iterate three times, but we don't have anything initialized. So you're going to see some weird things, which is why I included the initialize function. It's really important that you do initialize your data 
um, before using it. So let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, our first student is student name Jack White. Basically, all the information we entered here will be output on this first um, bit of data. Then the student name here, um, we didn't really set it to anything, but you're getting some weird results here. Um, again, you don't want that. So after our print function, we're going to initialize everything. Whoops, initialize, and call the print again on the initialized data. So as you can see here, our, we have three sets of data that are initialized to student name is null and everything else is zero. And then we're going to call our input function, which lets us input data into our student enrolled array um, of student struct student type. And then we're going to print the data that we input. So let's go ahead, enter first name, Jack White, student ID, one, two, three, four, five. Test score, let's just make up random, random bits here. 98.7, 87, 67, and 80. Then we're going to be prompted to enter the name of the second student. Uh, let's go John Brown, student ID 23456. Five more scores, 78.99, 89.03, 77.04, 78.04, 87.04, 88.04, 89.04. And finally, our last student will name her Betty Red. Yes, I like to use colors. It's easy. Um, student ID three, four, five, six, five, six, seven, and five more scores. So 78, 98, 87, 76, and 79. And then our print function will execute. Um, our last print function and as you can see you will we will have all of our data that we input so um, again it's it's a really neat way to organize your data and you know if you have more than one of the same kind of data like test scores in a struct um, it's probably better off you store those in an array um, there are a couple other ways to do that but we're not going to get into that just yet I just wanted to go ahead and show you um, basically what what um how to access and modify data when you have a struct in an array um, so that's all um, that's all we're going to cover for today please rate comment and subscribe as always thank you for watching and i hope to see you for my next video